I have to admit, I've got a soft spot for Saab. They've had a rough time of it since General Motors bought the company back in 1991. Since then, GM spent all of its time focusing on core brands Chevrolet, Cadillac, Pontiac, and Saab's been left out in the cold pretty much to fend for itself. But they've had little investment money and little direction, but they've come up with some good product. The first one we're going to sample is the 9.3 Sport Combi. But before I can decide whether I like it or not, I have to decide what it is. Is it a sports car? or is it a practical wagon? Well, my first impression of this car from the driver's seat is that it's a sports car. It's got all these bright, vibrant colors in the interior. It's got heavily bolstered sports leather seats. It's quite nice, but it's only after a few short minutes that the excitement really starts to wear off. Start picking holes in it, like this Time Zone S two-tone steering wheel, which is chintzy and cheap, dare I say it. And there's other little try-hard bits like the really bad quality CGA, like a micro B type trip computer screen. It's got IKEA style air vents and the cup holder looks like it was designed by a chorus of kindergarten kids. Engine wise, the Sport Combi is a lot more convincing. It's got a really strong heart. It's an Australian engine, but Saab had a turbocharger which completely changes the character from anything we've driven before. It's a real rush. It's, it's a bit of a delay when you put your foot down, but it's almost like it's just gathering its breath before it really expels it in a big wave and a real force as it pushes you forward down the road. And I can't help feeling the transmission's letting the team down a little. Don't get me wrong, it's quick and it's responsive, but it's not smooth enough to get away with as many changes as it wants to do. Now the engine and transmission aside, you may have noticed that the camera's been shaking a bit, and that is because of the ride. It is, without a doubt, atrocious. There's no other word for it. There's no way to be nice about it. It is too sharp, it is too reactive, it is too uncomfortable. It is not the kind of ride quality you'd expect of a prestige car. In fact, I doubt you'd have a ride this firm in a Porsche. But we know this car is not selling on its sporting performance alone. It also puts up a pretty strong argument as a practical wagon. And it's in this area where some of Saab's innovations really do pay off. There's nothing groundbreaking, it's just a lot of little innovations that make living with the car a bit easier. Retractable, adjustable cargo blind, a cargo area divider, easy fold down seats, which you end up with a decent amount of space for a car of this size. So it turns out that this car is a bit of both. It's a bit of a sports car and it's a bit of a practical wagon. It's not convincing enough as either though to justify a $75,000 price tag. Look, it's commendable what Saab has achieved without much help from General Motors. But it's not enough to convince me that with this model, Saab has come in from the cold.